So I was doing some work on Web Dev Daily the other day, which is an application that I've been building for the past year with Nux, for those that may be new to the channel. And this is an application that allows you to complete front end challenges. And we also have projects to improve your front end skills. So if you aren't aware of this and you do want to practice some of your front end skills, then you know definitely be sure to check it out. You can find the link down below in the description. Now, anyways, what I ended up doing was there was a route called slash home and this held the dashboard, which you can see right here. And I wanted to move it to a new route called slash dashboard slash home. And the reason for this change was because I wanted to allow child routes within our dashboard. So as you can see right now, we have two child routes. We have the home, which essentially was the old dashboard that was on the route of slash home. And now we have a new child route for all the latest solutions that users can submit. Now, once I push this to production, I quickly realized there was a small problem when I navigated to Web Dev Daily and inside of my browser cache, it had the old URL of home. And when I went to that URL, it actually navigated me to a 404 page error. So if we head back over to the application and we just enter in the old route, if we do slash home like this, you're going to see we get a 404 page error. And this isn't really a great user experience. Instead, what would be a lot better is if a user navigates to that old home route, we'd want to intercept this request and then we want to redirect them to our new page or the new route of slash dashboard slash home. And luckily, Nux makes this very easy to do. So on the docs under the rendering modes, there's a section about the route rules. And you can see we can define a ton of different properties for each one of our routes inside of our application. And in a separate video, I did talk about this property called SSR, which is going to either enable or disable server side rendering for sections of your application. And it turns them into a single page app for that specific page that you want. And if you do want to learn more about that, I'll leave a link down below in the description to that video. Now for the issue that we're going to be addressing in this video, we're going to be looking at the redirect property, which just accepts a string. And if we scroll up, we can see an example of this for any legacy URLs. We just want to define the old URL, which in this case is the old page, and then we can provide the redirect property and then the new route. Now to define route rules, you want to head over to your nuxconfig.ts and then you want to create, if you don't have one already, your route rules property and then this accepts an object and as you can see, we already have a few route rules defined for this application where we're actually turning off the server side rendering for a few routes. So the first thing we want to do is provide the route that we want to have the specific rule for, which in our case is going to be home. And then we want to provide an object. And then we have the property we want to define for this specific route, which is going to be the redirect property. And then for this, we just want to provide the new path that we want to redirect the user to if they hit this home route. And in this case, it's going to be slash dashboard slash home. And as simple as that, if we now navigate back to our application and we go to the home route, you can see we're going to be directed to our new route of dashboard slash home. Now, although this is a pretty simple change, it's something that I think a lot of people overlook, including myself. And the reason why you want to do this is not only for the user experience, but say, for example, if you had a page that actually is dependent on SEO. Now, in my example, it wasn't, but it just was a bad user experience. But if it was and then a user clicks on that link inside of, you know, maybe a Google search, then they're going to get a 404 page error, which ideally isn't something you want to have happen. So by simply setting up one of these rules where you have a old URL get directed to a new URL, URL can help in the time where Google hasn't yet crawled your website so that users don't experience those 404 errors if you have a page that is dependent on SEO. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you were able to learn something new and hopefully you can avoid making the same mistake as I did. But anyways, if you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like on it down below. Subscribe if you're new for more content like this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.